Hello everyone. Once again, I'm Captain Devil Sori, pilot career coach and mentor, and a co-founder of Golden Apples Aviation. After training thousands of aspiring pilots for uh, to achieve their dream of becoming a pilot, I have been uh, doing various trainings like mock crew activity and uh, mock interviews. Uh, once again, uh, another mock interview session with you. And uh, please watch this uh, entire uh, I mean mock uh, uh, interview completely. because there is a gift available and uh, so here the mock uh, mock into mr stop okay and can i worry well nice good so ankit please tell me about yourself in the day okay sir so as you know my name is ankit chohan i'm 18 years old and i was born and brought up in imt manesar haryana with two other siblings and i've just passed my class 12th with pcm also known as non medical and my Hobbies are I like to uh, watch football. I'm a big f- football fan. I'm very interested in uh, all the sports as well, and I have a keen interest in technology, like mobile technology and cars technology. Every aspects about technology, and I'm a, I'm a foodie also. I like to try new things and that. Now, talking about my family background, uh, my, I have two other siblings. They are both elder than me. My elder brother is a doctor, and my elder sister is a teacher. and my father's a property dealer uh, he got into real estate like when i born and i was born in 2006 and my mother is a typical housemaker why it is called typical housemaker like the things why like it why it is typical for you why it is typical for me because you know every mom like your mom used to do like house chores take care of the kids take care of her husband that's why okay so it is typical It's difficult or typical. It's difficult and typical. It's not easy to take care of a child. Okay. Okay. So when did you realize that you want to be a pilot, sir? Uh, it started as a conversation between me and my brother. Like uh, when I was in ninth class and he was pursuing his MBBS, uh, we were talking about uh, what would I do uh, later in my life. because as you know i was in the ninth class and i only had i only had one class left because uh, before choosing my subjects as pcm so he was like let's start on uh, let you started on the uh, pilot aviation or the aviation field because he was very interested in it he wanted to do that but uh, parents didn't allow so he wanted me to you know join this aviation field so that's where it, my interest began and then i have been following this aviation field since then okay so where where uh, you the plane spotted Uh, I did it at the jumbo point, like here. Okay. So how regularly? I mean, you go there? Like uh, twice a week, I say. Okay. So you took classes also for your DNC? Yeah. From where? From G. Golden Apple. Yes, I go to that. Okay. Okay. And uh, when? How was your experience over there? The Golden Apple. It has been amazing since I joined. Like. I joined back in uh, July. I also remember the exact date. I joined on uh, 10th July, and uh, I first started my coaching with Technical General, uh, Navigation, and Metrology, and it has been pretty smooth with it. Okay. Uh, okay. So, what is what is your strong reason? I mean, why you have not chosen other field and then this field? Uh, sir, as I already discussed with you, it came as a coincidence that I got into aviation field. But then I realized that it matches my traits. I wanted to be a traveler, and it definitely the, being a pilot means a traveler. And you know, I'm a workaholic. I can work 24 by 7, 365 days a week. I'm not afraid of work because I've been taught like that f- uh, from the beginning of my life. So that's why it matches. Like in the pilot field, you can be on duty any time of the day, any time of the hour. So it matches my traits. That's why I wanted to. So don't you think? I mean, you could have become a become a travel blogger. Yeah, I could have could have travel more and then work colleague. I mean, you can work in in you know in in any profession. Why this? Because sir, uh, as I already told you, it it was a coincidence for me to be in the aviation field. But when I realized that how difficult or how challenging or competitive job it is, I was like, yeah, I wanted to do this. And then I got into planes and specifics, and it was like fascinating for me. So that's why I got into this. What are the specifics of AC twenty? AC twenty, like I, 
I don't know about that. I know only about AC20 and XLR because it's my dream aircraft. Can you tell me there? Okay, sir. AC20 XLR. So it's a uh, narrow body, long haul, long haul aircraft, and it can travel uh, at a speed of 598 miles tops, uh, which is 0.78 mark, and it can carry 455 passengers, and it can it has a range of 4700 nautical miles. It can be in wall for a time of 11 hours straight without stopping anywhere. Now talking about uh, its engines. Uh, at the time of manufacturing, uh, they are using a continent, Continental Leap One, which which produces a, a thrust of 35,000 pounds max. But at the time of deliveries, they will use uh, P uh, Pratt and Whitney 1100 JJM, which also produces uh, 35,000 pounds of thr- uh, thrust. But it is more efficient and uh, fuel saving, and it, it 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 will be beneficial for the environment also. That's why. What was the reason of Goa shut down? Uh, sir, I don't know about that. I'm not in here. What in what aircraft were they using? I don't know, sir, about Goa. Yeah. And uh, how many aircrafts Indigo have ordered? Indigo have ordered, sir. Uh, last uh, uh, one of their aircraft were delivered like last weeks. So, if we are not counting that, uh, there are like nine thirty-two aircrafts, including ATRs and A three fifties. So nine thirty-two that have been in the backlog order. Okay. Okay, can you tell me uh, what are the advantages of piston engine over jet engines? Piston engine, okay, sir. So I think it's uh, very robust. Uh, it's very, it's not complex. It's simplified. Like the jet engine uses a very complex system. It's simplified. It's robust. It's inexpensive because uh, a piston engine is like used in cars and bikes. That's the miniature form of that, which are used in the Cessna and all that. So that's why I think it's. What is the difference between primary radar and secondary radar? So yes, a primary radar also. Uh, firstly, there's a difference in the uh, frequency range of it. So the second thing is a primary radar only tells you like the bearing and the range of the uh, like the range of the aircraft which or it is on. But secondary radar also communicates with the aircraft. Like it has. Uh, 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 so the thing is, uh, it communicates with the aircraft. Like firstly, it asks asks a question, then aircraft receives the question. simplifies it and then answers the question okay so can you give me an example of secondary radar uh, sir ssr uh, first uh, i'd say uh, dme dme is uh, okay. so uh, one is a transponder and one is another is a receiver okay so okay or maybe an interrogator and transponder can you see that uh, yes Okay, so so what is the interrogator normally? So so if you're talking about the SSR, interrogator is normally on the ground. Uh, so and then and in DME it's on the uh, aircraft side because in DME it's the aircraft that is asking something from the ground based operator. Okay. Uh, TKS uses uh, what frequency? So TKS uses uh, primary radar com- frequencies because its 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 principal is on the primary radar. Okay, how is that? uh because sir it's uh it's like only asking the other it's like asking the other aircraft about it and then it, uh, it senses all of its surroundings and then you know it gives commands to us it gives it gives the prompts to us that's why i think you only think the two aircraft are talking to each other yeah it is but uh it's like the se- uh, secondary form of the tks which is ra that can be in the that one too oh, so it is a primary radar yeah and uh Okay, give me a situation. Tell me a situation in which you have shown a good problem-solving skills. Good problem-solving skills. Yeah, sir. So uh, during our twelfth class physics uh, viva and the project, uh, we were given a Wheatstone Bridge uh, experiment. So like all of us were trying to you know uh, simply uh, you know were trying to calculate the equations and formulas and all, but none of us realized that there was a a, 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 a problem with instruments. so i got there and i simplified it and i uh, replaced the instrument which was like a easy task and i think that was uh, uh, giving attention to detail so i think that was key as i told you there's a gift available you can click uh, on the link below mentioned in the description box and you can download that uh, free pdf uh, which mentions uh, the tips and tricks to clear your first interview in first attempt Okay, so you mentioned you have you are expert in sports. Yeah. What does this, what does it mean? Sir, I'm a football fan from like uh, when I can remember my life. Um, my brother introduced me introduced me into football, and ever since I've been watching football, uh, playing football, and I love everything about football. Ask me, you can ask me anything about it. Anything. Anything. Who is the champion? 
last euro league last euro league spain which, which happened in 2024 july it is uh, who won the olympic gold uh, spain and the, they faced france and the scoreline was 5-3 i was just watching that game yesterday what does it mean you have an explorer is uh, under your go so i like to explore uh, new places new things and just as i told you i'm, I'm a foodie also so i like to explore that part of the way i like to try new new cuisines and all new new places uh, so that's why i think i'm explorer what is this hobby building in in hobbies what is that so building i think uh, it's like building in uh, relationship uh, friends building with that uh, what is a grey circle great circle so great circle is a uh, line which you know uh, which is a straight line that cuts all the latitudes and longitudes at the at constant bearing okay let's say if you have to go from place a to place b uh, the shortest track would mm. be the, the shortest track would be great circle but we don't follow it okay, do you know what is flaps yes sir i know about okay. flaps so sir there are two types of flaps firstly what are flaps so flaps are devices which are placed on uh, leading or training as of the aircraft of the wing that uh, help us to you know generate lift and produce lift and which will help us to you know efficiently fly so there are two types of flaps as i told you uh, leading edge flaps and trailing edge flaps firstly trailing edge flaps uh, there are four types of trailing edge flaps uh, plain split slotted fowler fowler is the most efficient type of uh, trailing edge flaps and split is the most inefficient and unproductive type of uh, trailing edge flaps so in the things about trailing edge flaps like they reduce your angle of attack they reduce your max cl they reduce your max angle of attack uh, they help you in uh, you know uh, for initial climb if it if they are used in uh, appropriate amount of angle like if you are using 5 to 10 degrees of uh, leading edge flaps then they are they can be beneficial for the initial climb now talking about uh, leading edge flaps uh, there are uh, splats and slots so they are effective they are and for the other one is kruger Krugers are most ineffective and slats and slots are effective because uh, they you know re-energizes the boundary layer which help us to delay the stall. Okay and uh, do you know what is uh, what are the functions of spoilers? Spoilers are spoilers act as a speed brake in air. They can help us to reduce down our speed. They help us to maintain you know uh, if we are rolling with the other thing known as uh, adverse aileron yaw. so they help us in preventing that because they can uh, increase the drag on one side of the aircraft so that we can stabilize the aircraft so are they used only in the air no I, yeah uh, they are purposely made for to be used in the air because on the ground we have uh, reverse thrust and all that we do use them sometimes which where we cannot sometimes uh, not always not always um uh, what is itc is it Uh, in, in, uh, inter-terminal conversion zone. So, sir, these are uh, inter-terminal conversion zone. So, these are uh, from 30 degrees north to 30 degrees south is the platform. So, I think they are uh, there's a calm belt around it in, in between 30 degree north and 30 degree south. So, these are uh, there are winds that f- flows from the uh, from this region and goes to the equator, and uh, which you know they are deflected due to Coriolis force. and these from the south side these are the winds that you know uh, help us to gain the southwestern monsoon what are the uh, what is the minimum age for spa uh, so minimum age for spa is spa is 17 okay for ppl uh, for ppl it's uh, 18 i think and lcpl a uh, cpl is also 18 so ppl and cpl both 18 yeah because we are training for that uh, ppl we have to be 18 and then if we, we are already qualified for the cpl okay what is the difference between gpws and agpws uh sir i haven't heard about agpws but i don't know about gpws it's ground proximity warning system so it acts on the basis of red alt radio altimeter which you know tells you your height from the initial from the a uh, height which is on the lower side of your aircraft like if you are talking about there's a mountain just beneath you it will tell you your height from the mount from the top of the mountain and and then it will show you information like if you have two low flaps it can all be also used for you know landing and where when you have uh, you have not uh, selected flaps uh, correctly or your uh, landing gear is not down that's all what if there is an obstacle ahead of you yeah it will it will it only works in the vertical plane so it will not show you the horizontal like then what's next to you it will not show you fine thank you thank you sir
uh, it is my strong suggestion to all of you uh, to mention only the professional skills in your CV. Uh, skills like explorer or physically active or building, you know, I mean, avoid such unprofessional skills in your CV. Uh, be very, very, you know, I mean, particular about what to mention in your uh, skills in your CV. And as I told in the previous uh, mock interviews also, I mean, if you want to learn more, you can watch uh, previous mock interview sessions uh, as well. This will give you a more idea and a better idea. Otherwise, try to make it, you know, a conversation in the in the interview. Yeah. See you in the next video. <laughs>